Bring Gary back up. Yeah. Doing five side there. Okay. So it's great. Uh, it's always nice. The only time I get to see you is when I uh, on a stage. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I want to start by uh, asking you um, one thing: is that you know when I, I see your presentations, they was so like timely, right? Because a lot of these things are just happening last week. Um, how do you, when you put a strategy together with, with the companies that you work with, how do you delineate between campaign-based thinking and channel-based thinking? Because a lot of these are, they cool, but sometimes they touch on gimmicky, yep. right? Which isn't sustainable. I, like, I can't believe that you're going into a parking lot to shop long-term. You know, I mean, it's really cool. Do it once, do it twice, do it with my girlfriend, and then it's like, yeah, okay, I've done it. So how do you how do you move from campaign to channel? It's interesting because that that, that particular example, and we've done other similar campaigns yeah. in Korea and other markets. But the um, the interesting thing about that is what we see as 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 that becomes more socialized with within the sort of the general population. One of the things that we're seeing actually is the demographic in terms of who's using it is actually shifting from just the 25 to 35 year olds you would expect to you know in 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 some cases now the second biggest demographic of that kind of of technology is seniors because what you're doing is is you know seniors have a, have a whole different issue which is mobility right? right in terms of you know being able to you know some of them can't drive or they don't like to drive at night or they can't get out to a store they need to buy something so if you can bring the store to them mm -hmm. wherever they are right they're happy to embrace technology to do that so mainstreaming you know some of this stuff is really just about you know socializing it making it known what's possible and and and, and generally we're, we're starting to see engagement you know sort of normalize around that kind of thing so it's Especially in, in, in some of the Asian markets. So do you, do you see, but is it that trend where you, where you come up with technology and people embrace it mainly from, say, you have a lot of agency folk um, on your roster. Um, do they come in and say, hey, this is cool. We'll use it for our back to school launch and we'll do da da da. And then it sort of dies. And then it's hard to resuscitate it as an onward going channel. Or do you see people getting their heads around, hey, we're going to put this in back to school and then we're going to keep it on as a channel and grow it, refine it long term? Like, how's the balance between the I think it, it almost always starts as a one-off campaign yeah. you know let's let's use it in this in this framework yeah what we try to educate folks on is to think about you know mobile and location in particular as as a tool that activates you know traditional media right because we know this the, the spend from an advertising you know pie perspective the bulk of it is still in billboard radio television right so you know you can do things like Shazama TV commercial right you can do things like you know, use mobile to tell how many people are actually walking by a billboard right now from a the carrier counting mobile devices and IP addresses. You can count IP addresses as you showed, you know, coming mm -hmm. in. Th so I think there's there are ways to look at technologies as sort of uh, lowest common denominators in that context that span all media. Right. But you have to start it with a campaign to kind of get people the, it, the, the other the challenge then, even in that context, is you've got so many solutions, right? Because especially with your definition of, yep. of, of location and mobility and, and engaging the consumer. How, how do you deal with option paralysis? There are just so many technologies out there that do so many amazing things. How, how, where do you start? You know, as a as a client, as a yep. as a, as a strategy uh, person working with that client, where do you start and how do you navigate all that stuff? Well, the way we typically approach it is either it happens one of two ways. Either the brand comes to us and says, "We have a challenge. We have a problem. Help us figure out." You know, the right other member partners that we can work with to, to solve that problem. And so we'll put some ideation around that and come up with, with, with some something that, that results in one of these. Right. The other way to approach it, though, is if we're going to the to, to, to the to the brand, we'll say, look, let's take a look at your existing media plan. Mm -hmm. Right. What are you what are you doing for the rest of the year in terms of where the dollars already already allocated? And in particular, around that traditional piece. Right. And then we'll look at it and say, OK, look, if, if you're already spending a, a million dollars on this billboard campaign. OK, let's just add let's take, you know, 10 percent of, of that million dollars and let's apply some mobile location element to it mm -hmm. to make it more measurable or more effective. Um, Got it. So we're not actually trying to change what mm -hmm. you're already doing or even add anything new. We're just trying to increase the effectiveness of your existing media plan by you know connecting some, some of this. So, so, so the incremental value to business as usual. Yeah. Right, because I mean, if you take Billboard for example, Billboard is, you know, it, it, it's it's a good media. We measure Billboard mm -hmm. typically on the basis of uh, CPMs. you know how many people drive yeah. by, walk by. You know, it, it, it's a very hard thing to measure, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really know. 
mm -hmm. right? There's some estimation. Yeah, you, you guess it's right? a CPM, but right. it's uh, but but it, it, if somebody walks into a Starbucks and they mm -hmm. check in and say, say they're there through Foursquare or Facebook or whatever, and you know they're there, right? And across the street, you know, through the window as you're sipping your latte, you see the BMW billboard on the mm -hmm. building across the street. Well, if I'm the BMW brand manager and I'm social listening, as mm -hmm. you describe it, then wouldn't it be an interesting exercise if I could push a message via Foursquare to that guy in the Starbucks and say, hey, since you're here, why don't you look at my billboard across the street and react to it in some way? Right. What I've done is I've taken traditional media, that, mm -hmm. which is mass media, one to many, mm -hmm. and converted it to one to one. Right. I've made it measurable, right? In a whole new way using mobile location services. Let's bring it back to Canada. So um, a lot of these examples are global and, and I, I know you intentionally do that to show it's ubiquitous and, and, yep. and it's used in, in, in diverse and, and uh, remarkable ways in different places from Guatemala to, um, to Russia. Um, what's happening here? Like I know that we're doing, you talked about uh, the, 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 sort of the SMS triangulation sort of uh, mm -hmm. work and we're doing a lot of that nationally in, in Canada and have incredible um, learnings in that space. We, we're getting 30% conversion uh, into grocery, where you know 1% uh, was was a remarkable. So, w w w is there anything anomalous about Canada that we should know uh, as as obviously a, an audience that is, is more focused on the Canadian market? Canada cross bleed into the U.S. Like where where are we here? Well, I mean, it, Canada's Canada. It's yeah. always risk adverse. It always moves second or third or fifth or whatever it's never moving first right. uh, on, on any of this kind of stuff I mean we happen to be based as a global organization here in Toronto so we try to go out of our way to kind of engage with local brands and businesses to try and get some of this stuff happening and get it funded because that's the challenge right when you look at the budgets here mm -hmm. compared to the US I mean it's it's 10% of you right. know, what, what it would be for, for these brands there. But that said, one of the interesting things right here, especially here in Toronto, is, is you have you know, sort of the, the good news, bad news story of RIM. Right? The, the demise of RIM has led to a whole bunch of talent on the street, uh, which is, is shifting into all sorts of new applications. And, and we, so we have great technologies that are being developed right here in Toronto, especially in the wearable space. Mm -hmm. There's probably you know, six, six of the top wearables companies in the world are, are right here in, in Toronto. Um, but, you know, it's a technology play. It's not a marketing advertising play, right? So the monetization of those technologies will happen elsewhere, right? So you have companies like Turnstile, for example, right here in Toronto doing Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. It's all over the news in the Wall Street Journal and, and everywhere else. But in Toronto, who's using it? I know, right? So it, you know, it, it, that's that's the challenge that we have in Canada. So I mean, I, I know that you've been involved with companies like Mondelez in in putting together camp, uh, initiatives that actually try and source innovation for them. And uh, and and is is that something that that we could do more of in the Canadian market to to help bridge the gap between you know uh, retailers and brands that need access technology that's uh, you know right in front of their nose? Yeah, I think it's one way to take the risk out. So what we, what we do, the way we approach that is, is, is you know, we'll, we'll go to the, some of these big retailers and brands and we'll say, look, you know, you need to identify the, the, the best and the brightest emerging technologies out there, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have a way to find them. And, and quite frankly, the guys who are two guys in a garage that might be the best thing for your particular brand aren't going to approach you because they know that, you know, you're, you're Oreo. You're not going to waste time talking to them, right? So they don't, right. they don't even bother. So we sit in the middle, right, as this industry association with all these great brands and all these great technology and startups, and so we we can we can play that role of creating these programs to source innovation. Where you know we're you know we're basically running a you know a, a call for entry for startups to apply to this program. With the carrot being you know you get to, you get a pilot with a great brand like Oreo or Trident or Cadbury or whoever in the case of Mondelez. So um, so we've done that. We're doing that with a number of retailers around the world uh, right now, and and I think it's it's a, it's a good way to mitigate risk. Absolutely. Uh, let's let's just move specifically into pay. Um, I know you have some payment slides there. Yeah. And I, I know, look, at the end of the day, everybody's interested in engagement. They're interested in, in advertising, interested in doing great, you know, fun campaigns that, that you can tout around the world. But at the end of the day, what they're really interested in is converting that uh, into a ka -ching, right? So what, what is, from a location perspective, innovative things that, that this group should be looking at in, in taking their plastic and their traditional incumbent, their digital strategies, and enhancing them? 
to drive uh, you know, innovation and yeah. drive. Pain. So I mean, I think everybody in this room is familiar with the term digital wallet, and 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 you know, we've we've over the last three four years we've heard lots of things about that from Google and you know the ISIS initiative in the U.S. and you know the Weave initiative in the U.K. and all these carrier consortiums and you know uh, the reality is is the consumer hasn't been shown the value of a digital wallet yet. And the reality is, is that too much of the focus by the, you know, the, the vendors in this space has been on the transaction and not on you know, all the other things that a wallet brings in terms of storing your digital identity, in terms of your loyalty uh, platforms and, and all of that, right? That, that needs to happen first before we you know, get to a transaction. Um, and so, so I think there's some challenges there. The re, you know, one of the things that I, I believe will change that game is you know, we all expect, you know, we happen to, you, know, you never know what Apple's gonna do until Apple does it, but we all expect this fall when the, the next version of Apple comes out is we'll, along with it will come an announcement that they're full into uh, mobile payments and basically anyone with an iTunes account can now use that account to pay for anything. I right. believe and, and um, C is, is, is not really rumored, but is, yeah. a, is, so, is, is a you know, The reality is, is why do we need to go and, and, and embrace a mobile wallet when you know, 600 million people already have one called iTunes, right? right? Or, or already have PayPal or you know, what have you. So you, you know, I think there, there are some players like that that will you know, get serious traction in the next mm -hmm. 18 months right. Right, in terms of driving mobile commerce and transactions in that framework. It, is the problem still back to the, that slide with the, the Ben Stiller slide where you you, you basically, we, we're still in a science project. We're, we're still looking at this as nuts and bolts and putting things together and we're not really understanding the human element. And is that why it's not getting adoption? We're not, we're not, we're not, the consumer is just not feeling the love. It's just not feeling that this is the cowhide wallet that they used to or the transaction that they used to. And there's this no, sort of, I mean, you know, the, the you work it out yeah, in the wallet in the we have in our room, pocket. I mean, the reality is, yeah. is, is the wallet I have in my pocket, yeah. you know, and the plastic that's in there, you know, it works. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, right. it, it, like you know, so show me what this digital wallet that is going to do that this wallet can't. Right. Right. I th it's as simple as that. I think from a human factors perspective. So when we get to the point where you know a guy like me who travels every single week, you mm -hmm. know, and lives basically in planes and hotels, mm -hmm. you know, when I when I can pull up my phone and my phone opens the room to my hotel, like unlocks to my hotel room, right, or allows me to check in, uh, you know, at the hotel without me, you know, showing any other ID. You know, those things are for me m perhaps more valuable than actually paying for for something, right? Um, and I think those are things that I can't do with this wallet today, right? Very right. easily, right? So, um, you know, so we're starting to see that there are experiments happening. We work with Intercontinental Hotels. We're working with Starwood. You know, they're testing beacons. They're they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, mm -hmm. but. It's not mainstream yet. It's a it's a it's a campaign, you know, in a exactly. one-off. Exactly, yeah, that's uh, a, that challenge. One-off yeah. environment. Also, but it will be. What, what are KPIs and what 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 are the, the the things that are going to drive it from a campaign to adoption, and yeah. what does that mean, and and is it just you know a fun thing to experiment with, or is this actually driving you know intrinsic value for your hotel yeah. or or your brand? Right. So um, so what what uh, you know from from a, again sort of like focusing seeing on the on the payment side. What on have you on, on the prepaid side and the gift side? Um, have you ha, do you have any um, members that are doing innovative stuff that you, you that you could uh, point to? Yeah, I, I mean, for for example, right here in, in Canada, I mean, Air Miles uh, is, is doing a ton of work around location and loyalty mm -hmm. platforming. Um, you know, they they uh, I mean, we work with Alliance Data across mm -hmm. the board right. on a number of platforms, but the. Um, you know, I think it's interesting because what we're starting to see, and even Aeroplan and, and folks like this are starting to look at, one of, the, one of the challenges we have in sort of this prepaid loyalty stored value world is, you know, it's relatively easy for the consumer to accumulate you know, some sort of stored value or points or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is, is that that ends up sitting on the books and most of the time it's not redeemed, mm -hmm. you know, to any level of satisfaction, you know, in terms of the, uh, the retailer or the brand, you know, who owns that. And so there's this opportunity for mobile and location-based services to, to help activate that in, 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 a, in a different way through push notifications, through, you know, so for example, Mapco with PayPal, mm -hmm. they have a huge loyalty uh, program. They got right. all sorts of people sitting there with tons and tons of points. But most people don't know what those points are worth. What, are they, what does it actually translate to in terms of products and services? You know, and are you putting, are you using the, all this new technology like push notifications right. to actually tell me that when I 
walk into a store that, hey, right now I got a thousand points over here, that's a free bottle of water and chocolate bar when you come into the gas station, right? You know, that should be the push notification. It should be about, you know, driving down that stored value in, into some sort of redemption, right? And that, for me, is the, is sort of the missed opportunity at the moment, instead of just sending me some offer, mm -hmm. you know, on some something that, that a brand's trying to, you know, sell. It is, isn't the big challenge with, with let's talk about specifically mobility, which is really, you know, digital writ large right now, is, is that you come in with with a, a great idea great technology and then just like somebody who came to me and would come to me and say you know how to become a millionaire and I say well give me a million bucks and we'll start there right um, it's it's a little bit like mobile, you say, well, let's do all this fun stuff, and then, oh, we require an app install base, or we require an app, or we require things that intrinsically say, well, that's great technology. Gee, I have to get reach and, and frequency over here before this is meaningful. Um, you know, beacons being one of those. You know, mm -hmm. you need an app, you need yep. certain functionality. Um, there's a lot of fragmentation. There's a lot of work that happens beyond the glitz and fun of the technology. When are we going to get to the point? You talk about keys and things like that, where it's not, oh, that's cool, I can unlock my door with a key on my phone. Oh, I'll never lose the keys that I have in my pocket again, which I'm always doing. Gee, that's so convenient, then I come to my Until my the battery phone. on your phone dies. Or, then, then it's all done. Oh, it's like, so. where's that damn app that unlocks my door? In which folder did I put it in? You know, it's sort of, it, it, you're replacing you know, uh, physical chaos with virtual chaos. And, and, and so, you know, when you talk about apps, I like to think of you know the future of apps being not on the phone, the physical apps yeah. like the Nest, the world that just use the phone to report, or or the idea that the store becomes an app. The yeah. store is app. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I agree you know. with that. So so we okay. we talk about that the LBMA in, in, in sort okay. of the framework of uh, you know the app is is temporal. Yeah, in, in in the sense that you know we move to a society where everything's smart, the building is smart. Right. So for example, you know let's let's take you know the, the the ROM here you know there's an app for the ROM great you know is that an app we need on our phone 24 7 365 no you need it when you're at the museum right so you know as I approach the museum the building senses I'm coming near it from a geo perspective you know it should send me a push notification the building should send me a push notification saying hey there's an app that can enhance your experience while you're at the ROM today would you like it yes or no I say yes it, it, it pushes it down it might be a web app it might be a you know download whatever but I get the app I use it I have a fantastic experience as I'm leaving the building it detects I'm leaving the building and it says hey thanks you know thanks for that hope you had a great time at the ROM today would you like us to remove that app from yeah. the phone it's gone right <laughs> that's, how, that's how the apps of the future work that's right? how it should work in a yeah. temporal or I mean surely framework. at some point some magic point we have something that that actually can manage all the functionality of multiple apps without having to necessarily to download a bespoke, bespoke app oops we may have that. It's called the browser. You know, I mean, yeah. is, is there an enhanced browser in well, the I mean, future the, the, that, that allows? That's the inherent yeah. sort of premise of HTML5, yeah, exactly. right? I mean, that's yeah. intentionally what it's supposed yeah. to do, it, although we don't use it that it, way is it, Yeah, but, is it, but the reason we're not using it, isn't that because we we sort of bought into the fact that we need to have a bespoke marketing app, so when you go to the app store, our brand comes up, because if it doesn't come up, oops, we've done a mistake. You know, we, we, that, that it, we, we bought into that whole idea that apps are intrinsically valuable for us, but really maybe they're not and maybe if we push the boundaries well okay so, so let me take this into a different yeah. slightly different uh, yeah. direction around that so this is why when we talk about location we talk about it beyond mobile right because you know to those brands that you, you're alluding to it is about reach and frequency mm -hmm. right so traditional media has the reach and frequency that they want television has way more reach than a mobile app will ever have because right. you have to drive downloads and all these things that you have to go through to get people there right so if I can use mobile to you know make my, my traditional media measurable all of a sudden, I've tied those two things together. I can justify the investment in mobile, number one. Number two, you know, what we see in Europe and Asia around uh, geo-targeted SMS makes sense because it gives you the reach that you want, right, without having to drive down. It works on smartphone. It works on feature phone. It works on all phones. Right. right? Everybody can do SMS, yeah. right? 
And if we can, if we can target that, if we can drive you know, web-based activity and browser-based activity over that in smart mm -hmm. apps you know, that are temporal, then that starts to make sense. That gives you the kind of delivery you know, Trojan horse model that we all uh, you know, desire to, to do. So then final, final uh, question uh, or, or thought is, then is this phone that's called a smartphone, uh, now when I call somebody smart, in my world, that's not necessarily a positive uh, you know, accolade. I say, you're a smart aleck. Um, you know, I say, you're precocious. Mm -hmm. You're smart. It's not necessarily positive. In most cases, it's not. Yeah, are you moving from the smart aleck phone, the cute, oh my gosh, I've got this app, you should see it, it does this world, to an intelligence server where the phone is going OTT on the app store and the world is becoming the, the, the sort of the intelligent location where, you know, part of the way that I navigate and this is just serving as a sort of a intelligent prosthetic to allow me to, to navigate and just say, yeah. hey, I know your profile is going to happen but I don't necessarily have to go nose to phone every time I go into a store or into Yeah, I, I agree with that. So I, I would describe that in the context of the data. It's all about data, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, you know, we're, we're shifting uh, the way we as businesses deal with data. So historically, we would collect data, uh, we would have all these big data, data houses, data warehouses and, and, and databases in our organizations. We store this data, we query the databases, we create reports and, 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 we, and we act on them. But the reality is, is we move to a society now where the actual data doesn't sit inside of our, 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 our buildings anymore. The data is actually out with everybody and all of us uh, all the time in all these devices and all these sensors, right? Um, and so it really becomes about not interrogating a database that mm -hmm. sits in, in our building, but in, in fact interrogating the world around mm -hmm. us at all times, right? Um, I think that's that, that's you know how, how we have to manifest and how we have to evolve in terms of you know marketers and engagement and you know the utilization of these devices. This is just a conduit, exactly. You know, to that data. It's a means right? to an end. But it's also a uh, you know um, a device that creates creates data in numerous cases, right? And the problem with this today, from a marketing perspective, is is that you know when we look at advertising on the mobile phone. What is it? It's, it's a banner ad that we took from online, shrunk it down, and put it on the phone, right? And yet this device has a gyroscope, a compass, a magnometer, an accelerometer, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it can measure uh, barometric pressure, it can do all kinds of crazy things. Mm -hmm. And as an advertiser, are we building ad units to, that use that? No, right? But the, all that data is sitting there, right? And we're doing things, it, like it, the phone is, is collecting it, mm -hmm. right? And we can do amazing experiential things with that if we take the time to do it. So do it. So go do it. Yeah. So thank you very much. All right. That was great.